Hello and welcome. The following presentation is a PTC webcast on the importance of systems engineering for smart connected products, featuring industry research firm Ovum, now a part of Informa Group, the world's leading provider of business intelligence. In this webcast, you will begin to understand how the demand for smart connected products has magnified the complexity of product development today and how it will change the way you create, operate, and service your product. In this segment on the importance of systems engineering for smart connected products, Michael and Headley discuss the concepts of reuse. How can organizations maximize reuse? ALM, or as it's called in enterprise IT, application lifecycle management, and I, at this point I have to say that this is, may not be the best uh, terminology to use in an engineering uh, context, but it's certainly um, uh, one that, that we are using at, at this moment in time. Um, we talk about the use of ALM in the PLM world. And application lifecycle management allows us to, 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 to get the benefit of reuse. So just to, to provide some context here, uh, we did a survey across engineering firms. And if you look at the um, x-axis, th those are the patterns of use that we found. So some engineering firms were using um, unconnected tools, sometimes spreadsheets, um, for the requirements management. And then the next step up, we found spot ALM tools like uh, change in configuration management, build tools, test management, that, that sort of thing, but unconnected. And then the next um, step in maturity saw these tools integrated. Um, and then the final highest level of maturity was where you had the ALM and the PLM integrated together. And then if you look on the y-axis, you see um, how the, um, uh, what the software that, that is being managed uh, in different ways. So the, the topmost um, layer um, embedded in the product, so this is the software that, that goes out in the product out of the factory door. Where you've got unconnected ad hoc tools, you're in a very dangerous situation. And just to give you an example, um, this is a real world example where a helicopter um, had the wrong firmware in the electronic control unit and it fell out of the sky. And this is why we really do need to um, use these best practices, manage the software, know exactly which version of a firmware is in which ECU. Um, then the next layer down, uh, we look at numerical analysis and modeling a huge asset for the engineering firm, the algorithms, and that is, again, software that needs to be managed and version controlled. Then the next layer down in custom tools to build a product. So what we're describing here are unique tools that the engineering firms custom build, um, and those tools are driven by software. So again, this is software that needs to be managed and version controlled and so on. And then finally, the PLM system. Um, an organization may be deploying a PLM system and they may have customizations and configurations running into hundreds across the different uh, areas, uh, the different um, warehouses where they're building products. So um, all of those va variations and versions, they all need to be managed. So again, this is a, a job for an ALM system. So you can see that ALM applies um, across many different ways within an engineering firm. And when we talk about reuse, we want to be able to identify components that have been built and tested and certified and speed up a new project by being able to reuse those components. And that means being able to identify them, check whether they satisfy the compliance requirements of the new project, and this is what a good requirements management system, for example, in an ALM suite can offer you. So those are the sort of best practices that, that we would recommend, Headley. Yeah, thanks, Michael. That's really uh, useful research um, and, and leads directly in, actually, to the uh, first item on this uh, PowerPoint slide. Um, so yeah, we would uh, clearly support that idea of that um, and ALM, PLM, uh, so software and product. Um, library, if you like, and database in, a, in an ALM and a PLM system so that you can find and reuse uh, requirements, as you just mentioned, uh, model elements, uh, test cases, results in your code, uh, all of those artifacts. That, that's, that's very useful. That's quite fine grain. 
Uh, and you started to talk about kind of stepping that upper level to uh, components. And uh, what we would uh, recommend is, a, is a, an approach for modular design uh, so that you can design systems of systems. And that gives you uh, four main benefits um, if you uh, implement architected modular design. Firstly, simplification so that you can step back and uh, plug systems together with interfaces. And that gives you a, an approach to design system of systems. It also allows you to implement parallel working so you can hand out tasks to other teams or maybe even other organizations and uh, design by um, uh, contract and, and uh, get things collaboratively built, uh, either inside or outside the organization. And then during the maintenance phases, we have uh, pluggable maintenance, so you can replace parts. And that's all come from starting with a, a modular design and, and designing in for that modularity. And then the largest uh, return uh, is the fourth one you get to, which is the actual reuse and finding those things and using them on all of the projects. And then the, la the next layer up uh, of maturity is then the um, the link to uh, product line modeling and uh, families and systems uh, and subsystems um, and their variation and capitalizing on the variation and the commonality. Uh, so uh, lots of opportunity to um, maximize reuse there in, in systems engineering.